All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to do an update to a very popular video I did a couple days ago, which was titled, My Girlfriend's Blue-Haired Mom Wanted to Give Her Daughter a Poly Marriage, Instead I Gave Him the Boot. And guys, that video, let me tell you, I did very well, and you guys are really into that with the comments. As a quick recap, that's about the guy, he's 24, he's with his girlfriend for four years, and he had, in his opinion, such a great thing going that he was ready to propose to her to marry. And shortly before he was going to propose to marry her, he went away to his uh, niece's graduation from the Navy, graduating boot camp. And they had a big party, and then there was pictures taken of them dancing and having drinks with the family and all that stuff like that. Comes back from his trip to see her graduate, and his girlfriend's different. Closed off, distant, not spending a lot of time together. Definitely a change because, you know, they were always together, and they were hooking up like every day. And eventually, he was still ready to, prepare, to propose to her. He asked her mom permission about this, and her mom was a blue-haired, divorced, effinist therapist. Yeah, real great. Who definitely has issues with men. He goes to propose to her, and they sit him down to have a talk. And essentially, the mother tries to convince him to give her daughter an open marriage. That they get married, but it's a polyamorous marriage. And this guy just cannot believe what he's hearing. Right? There's no way he's going to go for this bullshit, right? But to no surprise, the mother-in-law is a blue-haired, effinist, man-hating type, divorced. And essentially, the, it all came about because they saw pictures on Facebook with him and this girl. Oh, I forgot the most important thing. She cheated on him. Duh. While he was away, she saw the pictures of him online with some girl, which was his cousin, and she cheated on him. Right? Instead of talking with him about it or trying to communicate, she just went out and cheated on him and figured, well... I cheated, you cheated, now we're even. That type of thing. It's ridiculous. He showed him the ring. He was going to propose. and said, not happening. And pretty much said, get the fuck out. She's begging and crying. Please give me a second chance. The, the mother's stepping in. All this stuff. End of story. Done. And now he was moving on. Now, we're on to part two with an update as to what happened after those events when he kicked them out of his apartment and all that. As also, guys, you're going to see he, after I did this video a couple days ago, he sent this video to a whole bunch of his friends that were mutual friends of him and his ex that were giving him a hard time because of his decision to break up with her. And they all saw this video, part one, and they all um, realized, obviously, he was not in the wrong. But guess who else got this video? His ex. So we have a very interesting update as to his ex seeing my video about his story here and where things led. So, he continues his story. He says, uh, SSM, Thank you for sharing my story. I wasn't sure if it was worthy of a video. Dude, are you kidding? That's one of the most entertaining videos I've done in a while. In months. But I appreciate the feedback from you and the community. There was a lot to it, but the wall of text was getting too long, so I only include the most pertinent details. I have a new update from yesterday after you posted the video and wanted to fill in some more background. I'm pretty sure you're going to give me a, a nuclear smack, and maybe I deserve it. Time will tell. Well, guys, there will be some smacks coming at the end of this story. And not just from me, but from dudes all over the world. But we'll get to that in about 20 minutes. It was the day after I kicked Gail and her mom out of my apartment on February 13th that I had calmed down, calmed down a little and contacted Gail so I could pick up my clothes that were at her apartment and drop her things off. She was trying to apologize on the phone, but I cut the call short and told her I wasn't interested in her excuses. After packing the clothes, she had my place, had my place, two suitcases worth. I drove over to her apartment around noon. My plan was to go in and get my clothes and leave. You know what they say about best laid plans. Dude, there is no way after all that that you're going to be able to go in her apartment, get your stuff and leave within, you know, minutes. There is no way. Literally, it would take as if she wouldn't practically grab you by the leg and hold you down to cry and plead and all that. When I knocked on her door, she opened it and I could tell she'd been crying. Shocker. That only made me angrier since she was the one that did this to me or to us. She let me in and tried to hug me, but I put one of those suitcases I was holding between us and told her to stop. That only made her start crying again. I told her the only reason I was there was to bring her things to her and get my clothes. When we walked in the living room, I should have been surprised to find her mom sitting on the couch scowling at me. But I was. 
If this girl thinks she has a chance of repairing things with you and getting you to talk to her, bringing her nasty blue hair, big mouth mom into the picture to uh, ambush you like this isn't going to help her case, right? Unbelievable. <clears throat> I tried to ignore both of them, but she asked if I could just talk to her for a minute. Minute my butt, try it an hour. I had no idea what, what was left to talk about, but I guess I'm a bigger idiot than I originally thought. Well, we're going to come back to that bigger idiot thing, my man. I told her to say what she needed to say so I could go get my stuff and leave. She said everything she had to say, bro, the last time around. Her mom chimed in, shocker, and asked why I was being an a-hole and took me by surprise. Gee, I wonder why she's divorced, huh? I told her the last four years of my life had been stolen from me and it was partly her fault. She started to say something else, but Gail yelled at her to shut up. I think that shocked both of us. Oh, good for Gail. Gail asked me to sit down so she could explain, so I did. She and her laptop on the coffee table had it turned around so I could see the screen. She had my Facebook page open and I could see there were two pictures at the top of the feed. One of them was me and my cousin dancing at the club, and the second was the two of us sitting on one of the beds at the hotel with an arm around each other while holding a beer in the other. I see where this is going. This is why I cheated. This is why I thought you were having an affair. Meanwhile, if he was really cheating, why would he put those on Facebook? And who do you think took those pictures? His family. I think there were links from his family. Who know her? Who like her? Come on here. A little investigating, moron. She said that when she saw me on the bed with my cousin, she thought I was cheating on her, and from the outside, I could see how she would come to that conclusion. No. Okay, you and why would you post on Facebook you cheating? If you're going to cheat, you're going to cover that shit up. And again, who took the pictures? If I didn't know the people in the picture, I would have probably thought the same thing. Smack. Stop letting her get to your head. Gail said that she thought I was cheating on her when she showed her mom the pictures. She thought the same thing. She thought it was a misunderstanding. She said it was a misunderstanding and wanted us to work through it. Oh, for God's sakes. You know how well planned this whole thing was? I was looking at both of them, and I'm not sure why, but that only pissed me off more. I asked her if she thought I was doing something wrong. Why didn't she call me? Her mom chimed in and said that I was cheating on her. I would have lied about it. I guess that's possible, but I didn't excuse her for not even asking me. Then I asked them a question that neither of them could answer. I asked, who do you think took the pictures? Exactly. They both looked confused, but didn't answer. I said, it's clear the picture came from my mom's Facebook feed, and I was tagged in it. Right. He didn't put this on his Facebook. He didn't upload this to his own personal Facebook account. It was connected to him through his mom's thing. But she obviously took, took, took one look at that, flew off the handle, didn't take a, a second to like connect the dots there. And it probably, if she would have clicked on the girl's name because they tag people, it would have said her name, relation to this guy, cousin, right? Flew off the handle, made uh, assumptions, and there you go. <clears throat> they both looked confused but didn't answer. I said, it's clear the picture came from mom's Facebook feed, blah, blah, blah. I told Gail, you know, my parents have been married for 26 years and they hold relationships very seriously. I told Gail, my parents loved you. Do you honestly believe they would be okay with me cheating on you? And if they were, do you think they would have posted the evidence on Facebook for the whole world to see? Exactly. Come on here. She's obviously an intelligent enough girl that could figure that out, but because her emotions were so all over the place, and that's no excuse... And if not, her mom could have figured that out. But her mom obviously has a bias. And a bias against men. I think we sat there in silence for a couple minutes before her mom said it was an honest mistake that anyone could have made. Of course the mother says that. I got up and told both that, that a child could have done more investigating than that and found out the truth. Gail was crying again and she said she never meant to hurt me. Okay, but yet you still did. You still ran out and F some dude they work with to show me. 
Why couldn't she talk to you? Why couldn't she communicate? Why did she? What was her immediate reaction? I gotta stick it to him. I well, someone's gonna stick it to her. I gotta get him back and go cheat on him and all that stuff. What does it say about her? Her able to handle tough situations. What does it say about her personality? What does it say about her resolving problems? What does it say about her communication skills? I asked her when and how many times she slept with the other guy. She swore it was only once on that Tuesday after I came back from Chicago, and she felt so guilty that she was afraid to be around me. She said she wanted to tell me. Her mom said, we thought you were cheating on her. Her mom is just doubling and tripling down that part. She wants to be with you, and I thought if you were going to sleep around, then a poly relationship would be the best option. I know you love my daughter, and she loves you. It would be the best of both worlds. Yeah, so remember, guys, the old saying, misery loves company. Seemingly, this girl and this guy had a good relationship before her true colors of how she handles problems was revealed. And mom's alone and with blue hair and angry and divorced. And she actually counsels people. Unbelievable. When she finished saying that, I think I threw up my mouth a little. I'm not naive enough to think there aren't people like that that, she, that think that she like she does. But I never thought I would actually meet one. I was pissed and I asked her mom if she had ever actually helped anyone in counseling. Oh, I'm sure that pissed her off. That made her angry and she said I was acting insecure and making too much of everything. Gail yelled at her again and I was done. I took the suitcases to her room and dumped the clothes out on her bed while I started to pack up my own clothes. Gail was standing next to the bed begging me not to leave her, but I couldn't take any more of this kind of crazy. I left after I packed more my clothes and could hear Gail yelling at her mom through the door. To think I was planning on proposing to her the next day and having that crazy blue-haired bee in my family. L let's remember this part he said right here. Almost having that crazy blue-haired bee in my family. We're going to come back to that. So, what did all that accomplish? Nothing, except him get more frustrated and pissed off at the both of them. She flew off the handle, didn't do any investigating. Well, cheating on him was the best way to go, and there you go. Over the next couple of months, our mutual friends were giving me a hard time breaking up with Gail. But I told them to mind their own business. It is no one's business but yours and Gail's. End of story. And yet everybody has to have an opinion. If they're not going to listen to you, tell them to F off. I didn't want to be dragged into their drama. From what they were saying, it was clear they didn't have the entire story, but I had no desire to put my private business out for public consumption. So I basically cut most of them out of my life. It was around the end of April that everyone stopped bothering me. Even though Gail was still trying to get me to talk to her, I was pretty depressed and ended up going on a couple of Tinder dates. It was awkward, and I was probably putting myself out there too soon, but you live and you learn. I ended up sleeping with two different women, but felt dirty, so I stopped with the dating and went back to my own life. Yeah, that's what Tinder is. You got Tinderellas, and I'm sure you felt dirty. And please tell me, dude, you wore protection. And then uh, took a very long shower after you did your dirty deed. Tinder's a fucking cesspool, man. Some of these stories I do on here and the other channel with the Tinderellas... I've been alone and just working and spending my time alone since then. It was a few days ago I sent you my first story, mostly to get the random thoughts I've been having bouncing around my head out so I could try to make sense of everything and get an opinion from people that weren't involved to see if I was overreacting. I really appreciate all the feedback. It helped me see that I'm not crazy I spent most of the day yesterday reading all the comments. Wow, that must have been a job. That's, that was a lot of comments on that video. It was very helpful. Well, most of it was. There was one poster who said I should hook up with my cousin. To that individual, I hope you seek professional help. You really need it. I think I remember seeing that one, dude. It was uh, after work yesterday that I sent the video link to all our mutual friends that have been giving me shit. And by the end of the night, all of them called to apologize. Wow, bro. You sent, the, you sent this video to all your friends and they actually watched it? I'm surprised I haven't got any hate email yet. They didn't know what was going on, and it looked like I broke up with Gail for no reason. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised that Gail got the link, too, from one of her friends, and she called me late last night. Oh, Lord. Your ex got to see the video. I'm definitely going to get some hate email in the next couple days. I'm waiting for it. That's all right. I'm, I'm used to the hate email. And if it's a good one, maybe I'll share. But with your permission, because I respect you, bro. 
I thought it was probably stupid to even answer the call. It was probably stupid to answer the call, but I was curious and adamantly lonely. I know. Smack. I wasn't sure what she wanted to talk about, but pretty much as she hurt me, I missed having her in my life. I don't like where this is going. <clears throat> I found out a few things that were pretty shocking. The first thing she did after I broke up with her was to quit her job and cut the other guy out of her life. She's been working a new job and spending most of her time alone in her apartment. Apparently, after I picked up my things from her apartment in April, she and her mom had a huge falling out. She basically cut her mom off out of her life. Wow. Well, that's a good idea. That mom is nothing but trouble and poison. That's a big step. And she left the job that had that dude she slept with. Sounds like somebody's trying to win you back, my man. But also fixing herself. <clears throat> she apologized for cheating on me and took responsibility for that instead of blaming her mom. She took accountability. We're three for three here. I I'm shocked. <clears throat> she said she was angry and confused but understands why I broke up with her. She also told me that she's been in counseling for the last month and her counselor, a man, has been helping her get through her issues. I told her I was glad she was getting some help but I didn't know why she was calling me. Dude, she wants you back. She started crying and said something that I had to have, uh, have her repeat because I wasn't sure if I'd heard her correctly. She told me that she called her dad to see if he had any ideas of how she could make up for what he, she's done and get me back, and they talked for a long time. By the way, guys, I didn't mention it in this video. In the previous video, she, he mentioned that her mom and dad were divorced. Big shocker given how his, her mom acts with her blue hair and all. And she hasn't seen him in a very, very long time. And I said that was a red flag. That was a red flag that no dad was in the picture. But now she's reaching out to her dad. <clears throat> says here, uh, she said uh, she asked him why he was never around and why he never acted like he cared about her. She said he apologized for that but thought her mom would have been told her by then. She asked him, what did he mean? He said that he never wanted to hurt her, but he told her why he and her mom got divorced. They'd been married for two years when her mom got pregnant with her. It was after she was born that the paternity test proved that he wasn't the father, and he divorced her and moved to a new state to start over. Well, imagine that. The blue-haired, angry-as-fuck, effinist counselor who hates on men cheated on her husband, and, and this daughter is a result of some other dude, some other Chad Tyrone's child. Shocker. And this girl's fighting this out for the first time. It was after she was born that the paternity test proved blah, blah, blah. He was under the impression that Gail knew at this, at this stage of her life, and that is why she never talked to him again. She said he apologized for the pain he may have caused her, and he hoped that she'd be able to find a way to be happy. Gail confronted her mom, and at first she denied it by saying her dad was lying. Of course she lied. When Gail threatened to get a DNA test done, her mom came clean. When she asked who her dad was, she said her mom said that she didn't know. She doesn't know. There were that many dudes that she doesn't know. It was a ONS and she a one night stand and she didn't even know his name. That was when Gail cut her mom out of her life. That was the main issue she's been in counseling for. Very interesting, my man. So isn't that amazing the way that mom's acting and it turns out that mom is, uh, well, just like a lot of these gals in these videos. Remember Misery Loves Company? Well, there you go. She wants, she doesn't want her daughter to be happy. He says, get ready for a, uh, oh, he says, I'm not going to lie, it broke my heart. Uh-oh. I can't even imagine being in that situation. Her entire, ch entire childhood, was she was led to believe that her dad was just a deadbeat and it turned out he wasn't even her dad. He says, get ready for the nuclear smack. I know, I'm probably a fool, but she asked if we could try again. I told her that I didn't know if I could trust her, and also I told her about my Tinder dates. She was crying, but said she understood. She was swearing it was only the one time, and she would get a polygraph test to prove she was telling me the entire truth. I see enough of your stories to read enough comments to know that there are smacks coming my way from all around the world. But even after everything, I still love her. So, Mac. Bro, I know you were with her for four years, and I know you ain't going to get over her overnight. 
And I know I can see here she's trying to improve herself and cut her mom out of her life and blah, blah, blah. And she's got her, the issues thanks to her mom. But dude, there's been too many things here that aren't very good for relationships that will bring you a lot of turmoil in the future. And I'll come back to that moment because I know where this is going. Maybe I'll be able to get over it or maybe I'm not. I told that I didn't think either of us were in a place for a romantic relationship at the moment. But I could be her friend. Smack. We spent four years together, and I missed having her in my life. Smack. I told her that I would give it a chance if she got the polygraph test done and an STD check. But for now, we could only be friends. So that was late last night, and while I still have some reservations, I mentioned seeing the results of the polygraph. I'll be going with her with a list of questions to include if she really cut the other guy out. I have no idea if anything will come from trying to start over, but we'll see. I talked to my parents about everything, and as angry as they were about what happened, both of them told me to give her another chance. People make mistakes. Maybe that's what I'm doing right now, but time will tell. Anyway, thank you SSM for sharing my story, and I'm sorry if that's not the ending everybody was expecting. No, it's not, dude. For now, we're going to see what happens, and if I'm getting my spare room ready for my cousin to move in at the end of the week. Thank you for your words of wisdom. Even if it doesn't look like it, I was listening. God bless. Smack. Okay, dude. So, obviously, you're bringing her back into your life. Now, here's here's my issue with a bunch of these things. And I got to tell you, I'm not mad. But I'm a little disappointed. And I know I sound like a father at this point saying that. But uh, she, she showed how she handles problems. Well, that whole thing went down online. You had four years. Obviously, you had a good enough thing that you thought about proposing to her. And the way you described your four years, they were really good. Then you go out... And there's pictures of you on Facebook with another chick, your cousin, that was tagged in Facebook from your mom that she could have easily seen. Anybody could She's 24. She, of course, knows how Facebook works with tagging and all that. But instead of talking to you or actually investigating, she flew off the handle. And the only way to deal with it is go cheat on you and hook up with some other dude. I don't care if it was once. Not to mention her mother, who I don't care if she's cutting out of her life, supposedly is going to be in your life forever. You stick with her. Egged it on. That's how she handles conflict and problems. She had to one-up you. She was so angry and so emotional, she had to go cheat on you. That is not something you want as a future, as a girlfriend, let alone a wife, okay? And I think that's cool that she's in therapy because she's got a lot of shit to work on with, you know, and finding out that her dad isn't her dad and her mom's a big giant liar and all that stuff. I think that's good. She's in counseling, good for her. And I think that's great she left that job. She's no longer with that dude. And I think that's great that she obviously cares about you enough that she's going to do anything to get you back. And uh, what else can we add to the list? There's a lot of shit that she's doing to try to obviously fix things. And okay, fine. That's nice to hear. But I still get, can't get past that thing. Not just the cheating, but how she handled the situation. People don't change. And communication is key in relationships. And you get in a relationship with her, and if you one day marry her again, and things don't go right, and there's no communication, what's going to happen then? Right? But by then, that ring is on her finger. And now the government's involved, okay? And you can get royally raked over the coals. That's my biggest issue with this whole thing. And also, her mom. She may cut her mom out of her life now, but that doesn't mean in five years or five months, mom's back in the picture. Especially if she gets you back, okay? And... I talk all the time in these videos about the girls putting on the waterworks and all that, and eventually the guy's cave with the crocodile tears. That's what you're getting. And I get you miss her. You're with her for four years, and you had a good thing going. You ain't going to get over her overnight. And I know you're saying we're going to do the friendship route. Well, yeah, you can do the friend thing, but let me tell you, she's going to be the best friend you ever had. She knows exactly the buttons to push with you to get you back in. And I don't just mean the button between your legs. And eventually, because you're lonely and you miss her and miss the good times, and you end up making a mistake. And I don't want that to happen, bro. You know? And that mother, you get back with her, no matter what, that lady will be your mother-in-law, even if they're not talking. And that lady will be the, the grandmother of future kids if you marry her and have kids. And that's going to have an impact. It will come back one day. You don't need that. I talk about all these times in these videos, how important it is not just for guys with the girls, but to see how their family are what they're like, because their family are a bunch of wackos or difficult, even if she's cool, that is going to impact you and bring turmoil to your life and your kids. You don't need that. You think the blue-haired wacko mom's going to change? Hell no. She's going to resent the fuck out of you, okay? Because she's going to see you as the blame the why her daughter cut her off, okay? It ain't going to be good. So 
I get you're with her for a long time. I get that you miss her and you're lonely and all that. And you're looking at the past, your rose-colored glasses as people do. But I see problems down the road, man, and I don't want that for you. But if you're not going to listen to me, at least listen to this. If you're going to do this and not listen to me, because I think this is a mistake, I think you need to cut all ties. I, I really do, man. You need, to, I, In my opinion, you need to cut ties, say, hey, you know what? I thought about this. I really wish you the best, but just didn't work out. I don't like what I see here. I really wish you the best, but that's it. That's what I think you should do. However, I can tell you're not going to do it. So at least this, take your freaking time. Make her take that polygraph test. Find out all the things you need to do, and you take your time. That proposal, that, that ring is going to be up. I want you to lock that ring up in your safe. End of story. And you see how it goes. And you take your time to really think things through. And don't go rushing into relationships or anything like that. And if you do pursue a relationship, which I don't think you should do, you got to make sure, my man, that uh, you handle everything properly in terms of with an attorney and prenups and everything they can advise to protect yourself. And if she doesn't sign it, you ain't doing it. Amongst many, many other things. But I do not think it's the right move to get back with her. And I get it's hard. But uh, I think you really need to take your time to think about this. But again, if you don't listen to me, do everything you can and what you've learned from my videos and channels like mine to protect yourself Take uh, on all levels, not just financially, but emotionally, all those other things, and uh, go from there, man. But uh, now you're going to hear it from dudes all over the world. Your video is extremely popular, like over 50,000 views in like 24 hours. So everybody's going to be eagerly coming back to watch this video to see part two because part one was so good. So you're going to get comments. So brothers out there, by all means, let him hear what you think. He needs to hear this because you are helping him out. I don't want to see anything happen to this guy because this guy seems like a good guy. But hey, I'm losing my voice here. I need a drink of water. So bro, <clears throat> it's not the way I was hoping this was going to go. But uh, I do wish you the best. I really do in spite of all the smacks. Obviously, you're a good guy. But... Really think things over, really take your time, and I hope things go well. But uh, send me an update down the road, and we'll see how things go. <clears throat> All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think, definitely. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.